Hello, my name is Stephen Thomas with biztalkgurus.com. This video is part of the video series related to my book, Applied Architecture Patterns on the Microsoft Platform. This video relates to Chapter 10, Repair and Resubmit with Human Workflow. The purpose of this video is to walk through the completed solution that is built out as part of this chapter. Let's first start off by talking about the business scenario that's covered in this chapter. This chapter talks about a fictitious company called Bull for Buddies. This company is a small nonprofit organization that hosts bowling events to raise money for various charitable um, agencies. During these bowling events, donor information is collected, and after the bullathon, an email is sent out to the donors requesting them to pay based on the pledge that they have made for the bowling event. Currently this process is tracked in an Excel spreadsheet and sometimes many Excel spreadsheets. It is hard for Bull, to, Bull, Bull for Buddies to know when donor information is incorrect, when a donor has not paid, or at any given time how many different donors uh, still owe Bull for Buddy uh, money. So this scenario is how can Bull for Buddies look at improving this process to make it more repeatable and make it uh, easier for them to know the outstanding donations. With that, let's get to the solution walkthrough. Walk this solution is going to use a SharePoint 2010 hosted SharePoint list to collect the donor information. Once the donor information is collected, that will trigger a workflow inside SharePoint using .NET 3.5. This workflow will then collect the donor information in the SharePoint list and make a call to an App Fabric hosted .NET 4.0 workflow service. By hosting the workflow in App Fabric and outside of SharePoint, we have the ability for other systems other than SharePoint to be able to interact with it. So when Bull for Buddies expands and adds a website for collecting donor uh, requests, that will be able to plug in and leverage the same .NET 4.0 workflow service. With that, let's take a look at the solution. Let's start by looking at the Bull for Buddies SharePoint list. Have that open right here. And this is the SharePoint site that I've created for Bull for Buddies. Now let's click on our donation customers list. And you'll see here at the top we have various fields that we've defined to uh, structure what a donation request would look like for Bowls for Buddies. And uh, we have various fields here as well as an error field which we will see populated later in the event that there's an error in the processing of that um, user record. So let's just start off. Let's go ahead and create a new item. I'm going to go ahead and leave the ID field blank so that's going to be auto populated. For name, I'm just going to put my name. Just going to use some fake email address at biztalkgurus.com so some generic phone number I'm going to donate two dollars leave bowling score blank or that's required let's set a bowling score of let's say the person bowled 200 and that's all I need to do I'm going to click save and now that saved our user to our SharePoint list and you can see the information collected there. I'm going to go ahead and do a refresh on this and you'll see over here that I have my human workflow donation list workflow is in progress. Now this is the SharePoint hosted workflow. So this workflow is a .NET 3.5 workflow that is just going to collect this donor information and make a call out to a .NET 4.0 workflow service. That workflow service is hosted in App Fabric, running in IIS on this same box. Let's go ahead and do a refresh again. And you see here it's completed. Let's go ahead and click on completed and we can see the actions taken in that workflow. And now that came up and we can see that the workflow uh, history is outlined here and we can see that I've logged a workflow started and then a new record completed um, event to the history. So we can see that 
This new record has been com completed by making the call to the external WCF service. If we'd have had a problem here, there's exception handling in this 3.5 workflow that would have written the error information out to this workflow history. So let's go back to our donation customer list and let's go ahead and there's a tester application here that's included with the sample code and this allows us to actually process the payment for the user. So in this case the ID is 26 so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say 26 and I'm going to process payment and now this is making a call in to our .NET 4.0 hosted um, .NET 4.0 workflow and this is um, using correlation to call into the exact same workflow instance and set the process payment equals true for that user. Now inside our workflow that's going to um, receive the payment and it's going to make a call back to this SharePoint list and update information about that record. So let's go ahead and let's do a refresh and you see here that now paid has changed from no to yes. So for everything, for all practical purposes, this record is completed, the user has paid, and there's no issues. I'm going to go ahead and create a few more users and then come back and explain what I've created. So what I've done now is I went ahead and created two more users. The first one is named Stephen Failed Payment. The next one is Stephen Bad Email. Uh, the system is set up so that any email address that starts with an F is going to simulate a failed email. So you can see here that already this uh, the error record has been updated for this user and it says the email process returned an error sending the message. This error information was actually returned from our .NET 4.0 workflow service. So everything happened just like it did when we saw our first record. A call was made out to our external .NET 4.0 service. That workflow started and it actually came right back into this SharePoint list and updated it as a failed user. Now you see up above here that I created a failed payment so I'm going to go ahead and use our tester tool go ahead and put in 26 failed payment process you see true and it says update data is needed based on the failed payment. So we're saying um, in the UI tool here that now data is needed to be updated for that user and let's come back here and update our donation list and you see here it says the payment system returned an error in the payment process. So now that we see that we have two error records let's go ahead and see what this really means to us in terms of running workflows inside of App, App, App Fabric. Um, let's go to our Internet Explorer and here I already have it open to the Human Workflow website. Let's go to our App Fabric dashboard so now we have two records that are in the error status and we'll see here that we have various numbers of records in the idle state. I'm going to click on that and here are the various different process payment workflows that I have running um, that have moved into the um, idle state. Um, there was one back in active state who just hadn't actually had a chance to move into idle yet. If I wait a few moments that uh, workflow would show up in idle as well. Um, each one of these idled workflow represents a payment that is in flight. Um, either some sort of error in the email of that user or some sort of error in the payment processing of that user. Now there's more than two here because I've been running this demo um, for uh, more than once so these represent various different uh, uh, times that I've ran the demo. But right here you can see uh, my windows time is 10.21 a.m. and this record was uh, created at um, 1017. Let's do a refresh and we still have our 7 in there and this one was at 1016. So these would represent the two that I've created on the SharePoint list that have failed payments. So let's go back to our donation customer and let's fix uh, an error on this user. So let's go ahead and edit this user. Instead of fail, make it not fail for an email. And then for this um, purposes of this demo, I have this reprocess flag down here that I have to check in order to have it actually send this data back into the workflow service. Um, there's various different ways to handle this. For simplicity, simplicity, I simply have a reprocess flag here that the donor, uh, the person updating this record, would need to check that record. 
and let's click Save. And now that should be reprocessing it. And you see over here on the right that the human uh, workflow uh, donation list workflow is in progress. Let's go ahead and click on that and see what's going on with that. And you can see here the workflow started. And in this case, the update record has completed. So there's different logic inside our uh, .NET 3.5 workflow that says if I'm a new record, I need to create a new .NET 4.0 workflow. And it says if I'm an update to an existing record, I need to use correlation and call into an existing workflow uh, instance that's already running. So now let's go ahead and let's process payment for this user. That user ID was uh, 29. Let's go to our test app. Let's put in 29. I'm going to say it's a successful payment. And now process payment resolved equals true. Going to do a refresh over here. And sure enough, paid has changed from no to yes. Now, if at any point through our process, um, we tried to do something out of order. So let's say I come in and this user up here is already paid for 26. And let's say I go to 26 and I try to process his payment again we're going to get an exception because this is when um, our service is trying to call in and look for a workflow instance for ID 26 but there is no workflow instance because it has all been completed successfully. So what we've seen here is a high level overview of this solution in action. Um, this is a pretty complex solution to actually set up although we go through it step by step in the book. Um, it involves you know setting up SharePoint 2010 and getting Workflow 3.5 and Workflow 4 and App Fabric, all that to work on the same box. Um, this definitely took me a long time to get right and get to work. Um, so that's why I thought showing it here would be a good, um, a good way for people to see this uh, solution in action. Um, let's take just a few minutes and take a look at the code. Um, this code is all available for download. Even if you haven't purchased our book, you can still download the code through uh, biztalkgurus.com. Um, but I'm just going to walk through this really quick. Here's the donation list uh, workflow. And this is a workflow uh, 3.5 workflow, like I said before. Um, this is showing the exception process. And here's the sequential workflow, where we basically have logic for a new record versus an updated record. And then let's take a look at the process payment workflow. And the process payment workflow is a .NET 4 workflow and it uh, starts off as a sequential workflow service that then comes down in here to the flowchart shape and using the flowchart shape here allows us to have um, a more fluid flow through our process so we start off by sending an email and then based on the results of that email we could either wait to receive payment notification we either receive a timeout to the email or we receive an email error in either of those cases, we send our error email notification, which actually goes back into our SharePoint list. And then we come down to our receive updated data shape, where we're going to, this workflow is going to wait to receive updated data from our SharePoint list. If we receive payment notification and it is true, we send our success notification back to our SharePoint list saying that everything's successful. If we receive payment notification that's false, so either we have a timeout, which for purposes of the demo is set to two minutes, or we use our testing tool to actually say a, a failed payment, then we come back to the same send error notification and the same receive update data shapes. So by using the flowchart, we're able to reuse the same logic by just drawing the shapes in a, in a fluid uh, pattern. So this was just intended to be a very quick overview. Like I said, this code is available for download on biztalkgurus.com. I hope you've enjoyed this solution walkthrough of Chapter 10 from our book, Applied Architecture Patterns on the Microsoft Platform. If you like what you see, please check out our book on amazon.com or packetpub.com. Thank you.